Okay, this project is basically just a single line and a background. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go down here and select the line tool and hold down the shift key and just draw out a line. Go into the inspector. I want to change this from a solid to airbrush. I'm going to select the adjust item tool and zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. You have these little circles with crosshairs in the middle. They're similar to the tracking circles and you can adjust the width of the line with these like that. Okay, that's a start. Let's go back to the brush profile and tighten that up somewhat. And let's take the spacing down all the way to make that smooth. You can go down to 1%, but 5% is enough just from dragging the indicator here. Now while you still have the adjust item tool active, normally you can double click on the line and add width points, but sometimes motion gets stuck. So the best thing to do basically is to go into stroke, dial down the width over stroke, and double click on the line in here and add new points. I'm just going to rough these in right now. I need, I think it's six total, so I've got three, four, five, and six. Go back to the adjust item tool, and I can adjust these in the canvas. So this will be the pin part. I can drag this left or right. And it's always going to be left or right, even if this is a vertical line. Go figure. Now you'll notice when I make an adjustment here that this is bouncing up and down like that. Well, when you change the size of these, it's kind of like changing the volume somewhat, and there's a reflow. So you have to, if you want to get the exact size you want, you're going to have to kind of judge where to make the adjustment. So I'll go down to about here, and we still can't really see this very well. So the next thing we're going to go to is color over stroke. And now you can see this is starting to take shape. I'm going to start with a kind of a gray for the pin italic and I'm going to change the interpolation to constant and I'm going to pull this color down and change its interpolation to constant and since I can't really see where the pin and the head of the pin are coming together I'm going to go back into the style and reverse stacking That way I can see where the pin and the bottom part of this section meet. Back and back. Let's change this to a red. And I'm going to add slight differences in shading here. Okay. Oh my God. All right. Well, you can always go into the width over stroke and manipulate these keyframe like items here. 
for more precision. If you hold down the command key and with uh, points selected, type the arrow keys, you can position these somewhat. All right, this is a little large. I can use the edit points tool to position this around. Okay, go ahead and add a group, bring it to the bottom, add a gradient background. Want this gradient to go from I'll broadcast safe somewhere to medium gray. Select the adjust item tool and smooth out the gradient somewhat. I'm having a little bit of a angular pitch here in the light. I can move my line over. actually helps to be able to grab it. A couple of things you can do with this that give it a little bit more polish is to add a stylized indent. Take the depth down and the softness ambient Add a little brightness and a vignette stylize vignette all right Add a little shadow. And soften the saturation a little bit here. Size. All right. I'm going to duplicate the line and turn off the vignette and the indent. and add a color correction, hue saturation, take the saturation down, the value down, and I think what I want to do with this is clone it, turn off the original, and distort this. And add a blur, variable blur, and center that down here by the pin, and turn off crop. And it doesn't need to be that dark, so I'll just turn down the opacity. And some variation of that. Hope you found this useful, and I'll catch you on the next one.